Here's everything you need to know about Star Wars Grand Inquisitor. This is Nerdist Now. The first Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer dropped last week, did you see it? And we still have a few questions about how this new Disney Plus series is going to play out. But one thing we do know is that old Ben is this alias good enough Kenobi is going to be going up against members of the Inquisitorious, including the Grand Inquisitor himself, very likely. But who exactly is this Grand Inquisitor from the stretches of a distant galaxy? Ignore me! No, no, not that one. We're going to be getting into the backstory of this former Jedi turned Jedi hunter, but if you want to read further in depth about him and the Inquisitorious, Mikey Wall has you covered over on Nerdist.com. Now to talk about old vampire face here, we're going to be talking about the new Obi-Wan trailer, obviously, as well as Star Wars Rebels, The Clone Wars, and some of the comic books. So if you want to go into Obi-Wan with a complete lack of vision on May 25th, make like Ewan McGregor and go be handsome on some desert planet by yourself. Son of a bitch. Still here? Fantastic. So the Grand Inquisitor's story goes far beyond what fans saw on the animated series Rebels. The former Jedi Temple Guard who embraced the dark side is destined to suffer one of the grimmest fates in the Star Wars universe. And the Obi-Wan series could give us a greater understanding of how the Grand Inquisitor ended up on a path that leads to a toasty end. But how and why was the Inquisitorious started? While he was Chancellor of the Republic, Palpatine had a vision that he'd control a group of Force-sensitive soldiers that would help him maintain power throughout the galaxy by serving as spies and assassins. He'd use them to eliminate potential threats, especially the few Jedi who would inevitably survive Order 66 and any potential future Jedi. After Palpatine's plan to kidnap Force-sensitive children by hiring Cad Bane went south, he went back to the drawing board. Once he had complete control of the galaxy, Palpatine enacted his plan and began the Inquisitorious. The Inquisitorious is a collection of Force users who were not Sith Lords. I don't want the Sith Lord lobby coming after us. There can only be two Sith Lords in existence at any given time, according to the Sith Rule of Two. Kind of like how only two people have the recipe for Coca-Cola. But like Sith Lords, the Inquisitors did learn and use the ways of the dark side. While ultimately serving Palpatine, Darth Vader oversaw the work of the Inquisitors, also known as the Red Blades. Can you guess why they're called that? Hint. It's not related to rollerblading. Members of the Inquisitorious were known as brothers and sisters and named by number, like eighth brother, seventh sister, a third example. They served the Emperor really well up until the beginning of the Galactic Civil War. Palpatine had become pretty sure that the Jedi Order had been eliminated for good and the remaining Inquisitors that hadn't perished during their time of service then vanished without explanation. What exactly happened to them is unknown, however, it's not hard to imagine who made them disappear. Neither Palpatine nor Vader ever wanted any potential challengers to their own positions. And with the Jedi gone, Inquisitors might eventually pose such a threat. We do know the fate of the most infamous member of the group, however, the Grand Inquisitor. The Grand Inquisitor, the most powerful and highest ranking member of the group whom Palpatine personally recruited, wasn't alive by the time of the Civil War, but we'll get to that in a moment. Among the survivors of Order 66 was a guard of the Jedi Temple, a Powan male from the planet Utapau. And Instead of zapping him into oblivion, Palpatine recruited the former Jedi Knight to become the highest ranking member of his new group. A role the now Grand Inquisitor, who wielded a double-bladed spinning lightsaber, relished. Very little is known about the Grand Inquisitor before he joined Palpatine and the Dark Side, including when exactly he was first introduced. His first appearance has been retconned to be an episode of the Clone Wars animated series, which Dave Filoni talked about in an interview with Slash Film back in 2016. The Grand Inquisitor was a Jedi Knight. Pablo Hidalgo and I had been debating which one he was, but he is one of the temple guards that arrests Ahsoka when she is accused of treason against the Jedi Knights. And he is also one of the temple guards in Clone Wars that is with Anakin when he fights Barriss Offee and arrests Barriss Offee for treason. But the Grand Inquisitor's surprising history as a Jedi Knight was not unveiled on Star Wars Rebels until after his death, when Yoda summoned a vision of him to the Jedi Temple on Lothal, where he learned more about the Grand Inquisitor's growing hatred of the Jedi Order before his turn to the dark side. In the 2017 Vader comic series, it's revealed that Palpatine likely knew he'd be able to turn a Jedi Temple Guard into a Jedi Killer. And it all had to do with the Jedi Librarian, Jocasta Nu. She survived Order 66 and fled Coruscant. She saved as many valuable Jedi archives as she could, which Luke Skywalker discovered years later, and they're still safe to this day. Once she had completed her work, she returned to the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. She wanted to recover the hidden holocron that contained a list of every Force-sensitive child the Jedi knew of. The very same list Palpatine had once tried to steal with the help of Cad Bane. Nu completed her work and was about to leave the archives, but she couldn't help but draw her lightsaber on the intruder she saw reading the most sacred Jedi texts in the library. I bet you can guess who it was. No, not Kit Fisto! The Grand Inquisitor! The Grand Inquisitor revealed himself to be a former Jedi, a Jedi who knew had refused to let read those same books, making him feel unworthy of his title as a Jedi, and further disillusioned with the Jedi Order, which, like, 
Dude, get over it, it's a book. The Grand Inquisitor served Palpatine and Vader for many years, hunting and killing Jedi. He even recruited Force-sensitive youngsters to the cause. And though he was not always successful, he never lost his position as the head of the Inquisitorius. The strength of the Grand Inquisitor's depravity was on full display during his first encounter with Kanan Jarrus. He kept the remains of a master Jedi he had killed years earlier, Luminara Unduli, and used her body and connections to the Force to trick Jedi into rescue attempts. Dark. Kanan and his fellow rebels escaped the Grand Inquisitor's clutches, but they did not escape his focus. Eventually, the Grand Inquisitor caught and tortured Kanan, but after Ezra freed his master, the Grand Inquisitor met his end. During a fight between Kanan and the Inquisitor, Kanan thought Ezra had died. With nothing left to lose, Kanan finally mustered the strength to defeat the Grand Inquisitor himself. However, Kanan did not kill his enemy. The Grand Inquisitor found himself barely hanging on to a platform above a blazing generator. But having failed his Sith Lords, he elected to fall into the fire and meet his death rather than face any punishment Darth Vader would enact upon him. Before letting go, he warned the Jedi Knight that something much worse would come for Kanan. And it did, as Darth Vader himself took up the search for the crew of the Ghost. But it was the Grand Inquisitor's reason for embracing death that proved even more prescient, in a way he could never have imagined. He chose to die because, quote, There are some things far more frightening than death. Force ghosts have been a part of Star Wars since the beginning, but they choose their fate to live eternal as part of the Force itself. Darth Vader made that choice for the Grand Inquisitor, turning him into a different kind of Force ghost. The Sith Lord enslaved the spirit of his former Jedi hunter and trapped him in a most ironic prison. Vader kept the Inquisitor from passing into death by locking his essence at the old Jedi Temple. Sort of a Force poltergeist. And there, the Grand Inquisitor continued serving the Sith. The forever burning ghost of the Grand Inquisitor sought refuge in ruins of the library and killed all who came in search of Jedi knowledge. That was until Luke Skywalker came looking for a new lightsaber. Luke bested the Grand Inquisitor and fled before Darth Vader arrived. The Grand Inquisitor begged Vader to free him from his prison. The disappointed Sith refused. And as far as anyone knows, the former Jedi Temple Guard will forever remain imprisoned as a Force ghost in a place he once swore to protect. So while we know the unfortunate fate of the Grand Inquisitor, the Obi-Wan series will finally fill in the gaps as to what he and his order of Jedi hunters were up to before Luke Skywalker took down the Death Star. But tell us, what do you think? Are you excited to see the Grand Inquisitor in live action? Do you think we'll get a Cal Kestis cameo? And how do the Inquisitorious not cut their hands off with those spinning lightsabers? It really feels impossible. Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com.